Welcome back everyone. The purpose of this video is to detail my table settings, their filters, and to not only go over what I use when formulating a trade thesis or trade idea, but also explain to you the purpose of each filter and why you should be using it when formulating your own trade ideas. Now, if you're interested in looking at other elements like the premiums or days to expiry, I have individual videos on both of those and I will put the links at the very top of this video. Let's get started. The first thing to know before jumping right in on the table settings, which is right here, is that if you are looking for specific security, you're gonna type that into tickers. Right here, we're just using Disney as an example. If you wanna see Disney alone, you just type the ticker symbol right here. Now, another thing you can do is if you're just looking at the regular flow and you only wanted to exclude a certain security, you would put a minus symbol before it. So you could just put minus dis, and then that will remove Disney from your view. But let's get right into the table settings. So table settings can be found here. And we're gonna click on that and then you're gonna see a big list of them to my left. So one thing you'll note is that I do exclude a few. And you might wonder, why am I excluding the IV, Delta, Theta, Gamma, Vega, Rho, Theta? Why am I excluding the Greeks? Well, that's because when I am choosing my options, I'm not necessarily choosing what I see here in front of me. So that's something that I look at and examine within my brokerage. So I can see a variety of different options. I could pull up the entire chain. Now let's go through everything that I look at. So the first thing that you're gonna see on the left is the time here. So that's the time in CST. That's my time zone, central standard time. And the reason that's important to me is I want to know when these orders were placed because it varies. If it was placed in the morning, for example, and we saw a bearish flow first thing in the morning and then Disney tanked, that's not going to be as relevant to me because that move has already been realized, right? So if you were saying I'm buying these puts because I believe that Disney is going to drop in price and let's say Disney dropped five points, well, that's already been realized and you have what you want. So that's not as significant to me. So the time of day matters because I'm trying to understand what happened around that time and get a better gauge for the price action activity. And I also pair this with charting and I look at price action during that specific time. The ticker, of course, self-explanatory, but one thing to note on unusual whales is there is some good information. You can hover your cursor over and get some extra details here. So volume is greater than open interest. You can see that something might be part of a multi-leg option strategy so that can be helpful for you to understand the positioning of the trade and what the whale was trying to do of course we have the side was it a buy side or a sell side so as far as most of the viewers here will be concerned you're typically looking at a purchase most people are buying however selling can have a directional impact either bullish or bearish so when you're selling calls as you know this is bearish what you're saying is you don't believe these calls will go deeper into the money or if you're selling puts, you believe that the stock price is going up, so that is bullish. So it's important for us to know that as well. It also gives you an idea of what the institutions are banking on. Strike price is extremely relevant. And one thing you'll notice is that I don't exclude strike prices. And I wanna make a quick note about this because as you know, it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't call out con artists, fakes, scammers, 99% uh, of what we see online today. I've heard it circulated around that you should ignore in the money options. And a quick tip here in addition to the table settings is that if you hear someone say that, don't get upset, don't react, unfollow, block, stop listening to this person. It either means they're acting in bad faith and they're just a con artist, or they're someone who doesn't really know what they're talking about and they're learning on the go, but they're learning while trying to give you advice. That's ridiculous. The difference between an in the money call and an out of the money call can be separated by one cent, right? Because there's a point at which you cross over from in the money to out of the money. And even when we go deep in the money, that doesn't mean that the purchaser doesn't have any exposure. You can still have a lot of exposure. And why is exposure important to me? And what do I mean by exposure? Risk. They can still have a lot of risk. And your risk, aka your exposure, tells me what your conviction is to the trade. That means if you're risking quite a bit, even if it's out of the money, we have to analyze it, that means you're highly convicted. And if you're highly convicted and making a big move, those are the kind of trades that we follow to formulate our trade thesis on options flow. So again, is it a call or is it a put? Good information. Expiries, I have a separate video and I'm gonna put a link at the top here. You'll see it flash on the screen. 
to explain days to expiry and the significance and what you should be looking for. But of course, I have this filtered in accordance with that video and I'm seeing those expiration dates that are relative to what I'm planning. And what I'm planning for a day trade, these are the filters that I have on. And again, take a look at that video. The underlying price, that's very helpful for me to know because it lets me narrow in and have an understanding of what price this was purchased at. So when you made this move, what was the underlying price of the stock? If we're taking Disney at the example here, a $67,000 premium was purchased at 152.50 strike price, and that was a buy side with an expiration of January 7th, which is in three days from the recording of this video. Now, where was the stock price? Because it tells me whether you were in the money or out of the money and what the situation was at the time. So I get to see that at the time the price was 156.29, and that's relevant to your research because you want to understand their position. If it was 145, that would be very different because we'd see how much further out of the money somebody is making a purchase at. Bid and ask is useful because when we look at the spot relative to the bid and ask, it tells us what kind of purchase it was. So what kind of exposure did you have? Let's say that somebody purchases, well, this is a great example, 405. Okay, the ask is 5 cents. So your exposure there on the spread is 5 cents. So that means they were able to hit the ask and they were willing to take the 5 cent spread. They were willing to eat that because that just tells you a little bit more conviction and it increases their exposure. Now, I'm going to pause here again because same kind of bad misinformation from people who don't know what they're talking about. And I promise you, if you ever look into any of these people, a few months ago before they started blowing up their Twitter account with Furu Talk, they were working some sort of random job. They have no background and zero understanding. So they make it up as they go along, but they present it well to get people to follow. It is absurd to say that you should only be looking at the ask side. I've heard this and I've heard the... The myth, it shows urgency. So only look at the ask side. Filter for the ask side. You don't know what you're talking about. That doesn't show urgency. Taking a five cent spread on something you have conviction to anyhow in your $67,000 purchase, that's not the difference maker in your urgency. Your premium is far more impactful than that. And a lot of times, sellers will negotiate. So when you're in a transaction, let's say that you're in a transaction for... Let's find a big transaction here. Okay, relatively big. Oh, you know, an even better one right here. $4.6 million. This hits the ask side. Um, let's find one that hits the bid side. Okay, $342,000. And there's a spread here, 1770 to 1795. And this is closer to the bid side because we execute at 1780. Well, the seller here is likely to be more open to conceding a few cents in order to effectuate this transaction, right? So think of it from a real world perspective. If you're selling a house, this is probably about the price of a house, and let's say the house is $342,900, and someone says, I'll offer you $342,000. Is that going to be a big deal? Are you really going to be bothered by that? Does it necessarily they're not mean that they're not urgent, that they are not serious about purchasing the home? The point being is that when it comes to this amount, it can easily adjust to the bid side or the ask side. It doesn't show urgency. I'd say it shows a lot more conviction that you spent $342,000 on a premium. Again, all else equal because there are a lot of things to consider. Is it a multi-leg? Is it a hedge position? But I would say that's far more impactful than the few cents difference in the spread. So there's that rumor going around, but again, just take it as a quick way to identify a con artist who doesn't know what they're talking about. I think that if you explain anything, you should be able to qualify it. Con artists and the fakes are really bad at that. They talk in circles. And again, at best, maybe it's not bad faith. Maybe it's someone who's learning, but I think that's irresponsible to be learning and dragging people along. More likely, it's someone who's focused on getting the clicks, the views, and monetizing while they ramble on. Uh, and you, you'll note I do try to be concise here while also giving you guys a warning and a heads up. So that's why the bid, ask, and spot is important to me. And that's why leave the bid side and the ask side on. That's not as consequential as someone makes it out to be. And no, it doesn't mean that you're panicked and it's urgent when you hit the ask um, or vice versa. Size, again, that gives you an idea on the sizing. When you're looking at your volume and open interest, this is good in context. And of course, a premium, I've made videos about the premiums. 
That's another thing where watch out for people who talk about static premium levels saying X premium is the premium you should set it to. Always have your filter minimums at ABC. Again, they don't understand the nuances, don't know what they're talking about. Open interest. This is going to be something that you're going to look at on your options chain. It's not as not as relevant to you to look at the open interest here because this is on a specific strike that you may not be purchasing for your trade idea. It's not bad information to have. I do like to take a look myself, but this isn't critical because again, you're going to look at the options chain and you're going to make your own decisions. Finally, I do leave the tags on. Why do I leave the tags on? Well, it's a good visual indicator, right? Sometimes it's just it's helpful when you first load up the page and you see a lot of red and green. It kind of gives you an indication one way or another. But then again, you have to go deeper and perform your research. You have to look at the premiums, right? So just because we have 10 or 20 red, that doesn't mean that the premium size outweighs what we see on green. Rather, it doesn't mean that we have more downward pressure or more bearish conviction than we do bullish. It just means there's more transactions, right? But not all transactions are made equal. Perfect example. Here's a $4.6 million bearish transaction, right? And here's a $37,000 bullish transaction. They both only get one line. They both only get one icon. So visually, it takes up the same amount of real estate on the page, but they are not at all the same. And so that's why I leave the tags on. So this is essentially what I'm looking for. And again, this is what you can pull up on the side here. Most of these are Greeks. So you're going to see that in your options chain. Trade code probably isn't going to be relevant to the vast majority of you. The volume can be helpful, but we're seeing a little bit of that from the sizing. And again, these aren't necessarily the contracts that you are going to purchase. Some of them are out of the money. Some of them are in the money. You may not be interested. You're going to look at your contracts and that's on a different video. I do touch a little bit on the DTE. So keep it clean. Don't have too many things running because that just kind of clouds your view. If you don't understand something, do one of two things. One, learn about it before keeping it on the screen and if you learn that it's not relevant remove it from the screen to remove noise there's a lot of noise there's a lot of stocks there's a lot of data and the most important thing that you can do when performing your research and analysis is to focus and narrow in at what you're looking for so i hope that was helpful if you are not using unusual whales you want to learn a little bit more about it Check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I take you through in progressions. I don't make very many long videos. I don't try to cover too many topics because I want you to be able to do what I just suggested. Focus in, narrow on one specific topic, get a deep understanding of it, and then move on. So check out my other videos. And if you do want to give Unusual Whales a try, please see the description. Use my coupon code and you'll get 5% off. All right, guys. Thanks. We'll see you soon.